Yeah, I really enjoyed your talk um, about relating with other people. Uh, it really resonated with me um, because that's actually what I've been working with the most. I'm staying with my family again, so it comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's been the practice for me in the yeah. present is um, noticing that reactivity. Yeah. But but what really resonated was, as you said, trying to make others feel less uncomfortable and it not being authentic. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad you spoke about that because it, um, it really resonated. Yeah. Um, and it was, I guess, kind of, it was good to hear that it's okay to, because like, as you said, it's a difficult one, you know, to, like, it feels wrong yeah. <laughs> in some sense that, you know, you want to make them feel better, but at the same time, it's their, yeah, it's like, it's being authentic as yourself yeah. and not getting drawn into their, their, I don't know, karma or conditioning or yeah. Um, yeah. their thing. So it was. Yeah, what, I what, I what I find helpful at the moment, but it's always like phases that you go through, is when I can feel that arising, like keeping the attention in the body. Because what happens in me, um, and this might be common to more empathetic people, is my energy goes out into them. So it also feels like I'm very loving and very expanded. So it's, it's that I feel like I almost become them. So it's like my energy goes into them and like Lisa and Lisa's body and anything about Lisa is totally vanished. And it's like I've zoomed right into them and like everything is about them and their feelings in that moment. Yeah, it's really, um, in some ways I can see it as a beautiful experience that can be helpful in certain ways, but it's it's also, it's in some ways it's not it's negative it's like feeding a negative part in them and what i find helpful is just staying like putting the attention in my body like so it's kind of like the opposite to this like non-duality and this expandedness in a way it's like very very strongly feeling the edges and the outline of my body which is also kind of like nobody as well but it's like and it's staying in my energy so you're kind of like distancing but in a way you're coming closer to them like mm -hmm. um that's i mean that's what happens to me and it's maybe really different for everybody in the way that their empathy manifests but that's something that i've found really helpful lately is just putting the the attention in the edges and staying what i call it is like staying in lisa <laughs> mm -hmm. it can be really helpful like so when sometimes i'm working with someone and they're really stuck, it can be a really helpful tool to um, help guide them. But it's too much, you know. Mm. It's too much. <laughs> it should be just very special occasions that it's brought out and used. <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, the way I experience it, because I think I'm still... I'm still trying to get out of my head a lot, so I, I don't um, I don't experience that um, you know merging or that, that radical expansiveness. Um, so I guess it's kind of like to to I don't know like, like to to try and be really authentic and feel into the conversation and not be in my head to avoid the discomfort of the interaction. Yeah. Um, Gotcha. And, but then at the, at the same time, not feeling like I need to say something yeah. um, because they're feeling uncomfortable, um, yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you find helps? Do you find help? it helps like focusing on the I am or like what helps you in um, that situation? So originally, actually the first practice that helped a lot was um, it's just this, I don't know if you know, like the, the headless practice of like, like uh, I came across this from Sam Harris originally. Um, it's like, like trying to look where that person is looking to and, and trying to, I guess it's, it's a way to find the I am sense. Uh, I don't know. It was the first way that I, I started was. Um, yeah. The headless way. Is that? Yeah. The, yeah. With that um, headless way. And then I guess 
yeah, I, I do that sometimes. And I, I agree that just trying to be in the sensations, um, but I find that difficult because sometimes the discomfort uh, like pushes me back into the head. I don't know. Mm. Um, like, like don't want to feel it. And then um, thoughts, especially if it's like a conversation, maybe like I'm not really wanting to have a conversation and the other person is, you know, then, um, yeah, I can feel like uh, you want to think like, I don't know, as opposed to just feeling it in the thoughts, especially if you try to put the person down. I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else that mentioned that um, another teacher that um, we try to put other people down because we don't want to feel yeah. what's going on yeah, in a way, yeah. I guess. So, yeah, and I feel you... like. Yeah, carry on, carry on. Yeah, I was just going to say the. Um, Trying to be in the sensation is probably yeah. a bit, yeah. Yeah, that's um, what what it's what I think. I mean, it's so different for everyone. So take what I say with a pinch of salt and practice it, and see, you know, see what's actually happening for you in the moment. But sometimes I find when people are very much going into the head as a way of protection, is doing what Ramana Maharshi suggests and putting the attention on the left side of the heart, and he calls that like the I am. And, and it's like pulling your attention more into the body. Another good exercise for it is, I know this sounds like really odd, but when you're in social situations and you're finding you're going into your head, if you can just take five minutes, like going to the bathroom or something, and massaging something like your hands or your feet to try to pull the attention back into the body, into um, yeah, the body. Yeah. But I mean, it's everybody is so different. I know that any advice I give is like trying to, you know, like mm. pin a needle in a haystack because we're so different. We're such different paths, with so such different conditioning, and, and we mm. really have to explore and see what feels right for us. And ultimately, we do know what feels right for us. We just sometimes need mm. a bit more guidance. And and I think that's a really important way of teaching is trying to encourage the student or the participant to find their own way and not to rely too much on what other people say. Yeah, thank you for those uh, practices. It's um, a good thing to try. Yeah, um, and it's just such that, a great, like, like so tomorrow um, uh, for a few days we have people coming to say, stay and like I have this excitement. I'm like, it's another opportunity for me to practice. <laughs> it's like, that's so exciting. Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> How is the Lisa yeah. character going to deal with it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to look at it. Yeah, um, yeah I, actually, that, that heart one, I think that similar to what I try to do with the sensation. Yeah. Um, a teacher once, I can't remember, but some practice, they once spoke of getting into the heart space, but larger than the physical body. So, like, just beyond, like, yeah, uh, like a larger heart space than just beyond the heart, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I try to rest there in some conversations and that works. So I think it's similar to um, what you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of bringing the attention into the body, but it's also there's this touch of like the absolute of something bigger than the body, bigger than all of us, which is beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just had one other question. Yeah. Um, I, um, so it's just funny how things have changed for me um, recently. At one point, I, because uh, of just my present environment, I was practicing um, a lot uh, because uh, I feel like I, you know, I, Angelo speaks a lot about like a heart level commitment. Yeah, you know, Angelo, the teacher. Yeah. Um, commitment to awakening and making it the most important thing in your life. And I feel like when I um, when I felt that, then I was practicing. Yeah, I, I prioritized it. Um, but just environments have changed now, and I find it difficult to um, commit to. Uh, practicing and then there's a part of me that just wants to let everything unfold as it is and let go of trying to control what's mm. happening because I realize that that's a part of it is yeah. um, trying to control how things play out but another part of me 
feels another part of me knows that I'm like, if I think to go and sit in stillness for half an hour or an hour, I feel a resistance and look for a distraction. Yeah. Um, and I'm, that's, I guess what I'm, uh, tossing between. And I feel, you know, like I can convince myself or, or you know, maybe I don't know what the word for it, but like, um, you know, oh, I don't need to practice because I just, just let things happen yeah. as they do. Um, yeah, this is and, the nature of the mind. It's so it's so beautifully <laughs> wonderful in its complexity, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. Because we're just we're just here, and then this voice, which presents itself as us, arises and tells us all these different things. And it's like, yes, this is Lisa speaking, or this is um, uh, Kyle speaking, and this is the truth. You don't need to meditate because. Well, I can't remember your reason now because you're just letting things happen. And then the next day you're like, oh, no, that's wrong. I did it wrong. And then the voice is saying, I need to meditate and you should be meditating. And it's kind of always going backwards and forwards in itself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would just, everything is an exploration. So this is what's coming up in you now. And it's not that one voice is right over the other. Because it can't be any different from what it is. What you'll find, the more that you explore and the more that you watch the mind and watch the thoughts rather than being involved in them and watch the feelings that are coming with them and you, you kind of distance yourself from them, you'll find your more authentic feeling, like what is my most authentic want? And then through that, you're, the, the, the way will begin to be navigated, like what is more authentic? But the, the key to it is, is, is not being fooled by the mind. So it's saying you should practice. It's like having a debate. And it's no different mm. from like having an argument with a partner and then you did it wrong or you didn't do it wrong. You should have done this or you shouldn't have done that. So it's just watching. Like there is this mind telling you you should do one thing and then another. And then there's most probably a difficulty or an uncomfortableness in the solar plexus because that's often related to choice. But you've got to explore this for yourself. I'm just giving some ideas for exploration. So the, sen the solar plexus is uncomfortable. So this is the practice. It's like there is this conversation happening and then I have certain emotional responses coming up and it colors my experience. And none of it's true. What's always true is the I am and the empty looking. And then there is this discomfort. What should I do now? I don't know what to do. Should I do this or should I do that? And then the narrative begins. And what you, it's the same as when I was speaking about, you know, like um, being empathetic to the other person and thinking that if I'm empathetic to the other person or if I help them out of their discomfort, that I'm actually helping them, whereas maybe I'm feeding into a part of their neurosis. And it's the same with you and me now. If I gave you an answer of what you should do, <laughs> am I helping you or am I feeding into your neurosis? We don't know in the end because I can't like look inside your brain and, and you can't look inside mine and we can't understand that. But what I can do is just point out all these different things and then some sort of conclusion will be made. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I feel a part of me knows that even just asking this question is um, it's just a thought, I guess. You know? Yeah. Um, it's just the mind, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, you and can know, you connect uh, it to a feeling? Um, I uh, like right now the question. Or... Yeah, right now, or just in your memory of your past experiences. But can you connect that to a feeling like that indecision? Um, I can, I I feel a lot of contraction in the body. Uh, when I'm not practicing a lot. Um, so, and then, then a part of me starts to say that I need to practice. Mm. Um, but I, and I, do you know, I feel, do you know where you feel the contraction? Do you know, is it, is it in your shoulders or your face or your brain? Like some people get con brain contractions or in your heart yeah. or in your guts. I try to feel into it when I'm feeling a contraction. Mm. Um, and um, I guess it varies, and you, yeah, I can't tell. Like maybe it's in a different place for a different thing. I, I'm, I'm not that aware. I, I guess I kind of painted it with the brush of like, oh, there's a contraction or something. Hmm. But the, the throat, I, just more recently, I said like yesterday, the day before, when I was 
fitting into it, I know to a feels like that in the throat. Yeah. Um, so in the but, throat, yeah. it's it's if it, if the throat is contracted, contracted, like often the feelings in the throat. So the way that I base this is on chakra work, and and when the throat is contracted, I'm not saying this is definitely for you. You've got to explore, but it's often about being able to express what you want, knowing what you want, knowing um, your feelings. So it's like your feelings being interpreted, and then you being able to express it. So that even might be to yourself, like articulating it, being heard. Like, so sometimes we haven't had a parent that helps us reflect back what we want or what we don't want. So it can be related to that, that there's a feeling of not being heard or not being listened to or, or the parent not helping us with making choices. So the throat is all about being able to articulate it, so being able to interpret it and articulate it outwards, which which can be towards yourself, you know, like, I need to do this now, about being mm. heard, mm. about being seen, about the way that you're relating with others. It's just an exploration. That's something you can also explore. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Something, yeah, I wouldn't have thought of, because that does... I, that can fit. <laughs> um, also, with uh, being at home um, and trying to deal with reactivity with family members and that kind of thing, that can definitely make sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, do your parents encourage you to make your own choices or do they want to dominate your choices? Do they do it mm. through subtle implication or do they do it through outright domination? Like, um, mm. they. Are they supportive of your choices? Do they want you to be who you are or do they want to be you to be their imagination like of who they want? Do they want you to live up to their imagination of what they want? So it's it's just super interesting to explore all of what's happening in these situations. And our body, I feel like, is like traffic lights. So if it's in the throat, then it's about your communication with the people that you're in front, front of, most likely. Like what... Like, it's not necessarily, they could be communicating well, but it's triggering something in you. If it's in the solar plexus, it's often about choice and depression, feeling stuck, feeling hopeless, like you can't, you can't get your mm. way, like feeling unempowered. Like, there's, there's all different areas. See, if it's in the heart, then it's often about your choice and how that brings you love like love from the outside. If it's in the head, then it's about thinking, compulsive thinking about um, you living through the conceptual idea of yourself. Uh, I do feel it in the head as well. Yeah. I think that's um, sometimes my resistance practice is because there's a sensation in the head that I don't want to feel. And then um, the thing to practice Mm. It feels like it's just going to be very heady. <laughs> yeah, very heady. So a good thing you can do when, like, when you feel like that is a really good thing that's very easy is doing something like taking a shower because the shower is putting attention on your body. So rather than just sitting there and feeling like everything's getting stuck in your head, you take the shower and you can even place it on different parts of your body, the shower head, and you and your practice is, your meditation is, is putting your attention where the top, the water is touching your body. This is just as a, an example, mm. because sometimes just sitting in meditation, and if you're having this problem when you're going up into the head, it's very difficult to get to something deeper. So it's then these sorts of activities help. Doing physical exercise, doing yoga, doing qigong, all of these things help bring that attention more into the body. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. The shower Thank one you. is great because who doesn't like a shower? Maybe you're one person that doesn't. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I that. really don't want to meditate now. And then it's like, oh, I'll take a shower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an interesting one because I think I found some of the things similar on my own is uh, I like to go swimming a lot. And then um, if the water's cold, I feel the sensations a lot more. And then afterwards, I'll feel like I'm a lot less in my head. And um, Yeah, water's great yeah. for this, yeah. Because water, because yeah, like yeah. the head is air, and so water is like this heavy energy that's 
that's you know bringing you back down to the feeling and the sensations in the water and then the coldness is also a strong sensation yeah, yeah. okay thank nice. you Lisa. yeah thank you so much kyle lovely to speak with you